my real thing is I like action. There's some prime things that we can put into place in our lives to live a godly life. You can put skills and things into your lives even if you've messed up. Welcome to Joan's party of two. It's going to be a party today. A party today. It's you and I. Come Come on. on. Can I say that you are looking really good today? Oh, boy. Wow. Here we go. (laughs) That means it's going to be a good, good podcast. No, I don't think it's going to be hot. (laughs) Okay. Well, it's going to be hot, but not hot. Hot topic? Uh, Okay. (laughs) Joan's party two. Take it. Today, we are going to be discussing three ways that we can all develop contentment in our lives. Three different ways that we can implement that in our lives. Yeah, I think contentment, Jenna, is a big conversation that um, that all of us have to work on, right? And yep. just being an American, let's just start start there. I don't think that it's 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 um like you you're born content. It's like we want more, more, more. So yep. I think it's a critical conversation that impacts every your mindset, your yep. relationships, impact just every day of your life, just really trying to figure out contentment in a person's life. It, it impacts every compartment of your life from the inside out. And if we can develop some skills that we can put in to ourself and then implement them in every situation, in every relational, um, whether that's a, a great relationship or you have a struggling relationship with a boss, with a coworker, with your spouse, yeah, it's with one, your kids. It's, it's one of those things that impacts everything in your life. Yep. This this promise, I tr- promise, trust. What do you do? Trust you? Pr- trust me. Trust me. <laughs> There it is. I got it. It doesn't matter who you are. Mm -hmm. All of us have to deal with this level of contentment. So we'll try to bring some definition to that in a moment. But as always, want to encourage people to follow this podcast, share it with a friend. Um, If you're on YouTube, I, you know, like YouTube, that means people can see us. That's a little scary. (laughs) So that you can subscribe to that. Mm -hmm. But help us. Give us a rating. It helps get the message out. And if you have questions, you can follow both of us on Instagram. And your Instagram is? Jana L. Jones. And mine is Troy H. Jones. And you post better than I do, by the way. At Thank least you. I think. I, I think your posts are awesome. Thanks. At least I follow you. Well, good. But de- That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> DM us. And um, we would love to just get your questions. It helps us frame the context and the comments that we make and that kind of thing. So let us know. So, Jana mm-hmm. Contentment, let's just start at the very beginning. What in the world is contentment? What is that? What is a good definition? That is a very good question. Yeah. I mean, what is it? It's, it's, some would use the word happiness. I think that's a part of it. I think happiness is a smaller version of a broader term called contentment. Yeah. I like the word happy because you choose to be happy. But there's a deeper level of, you know, learning contentment. Paul says, I've learned in every, in any situation to be content. To be content. I've learned that. So that means it doesn't come naturally in our sinful nature. I don't think we're born content. Yeah. So Paul, it's interesting, Paul, I've never, he had learned to be mm-hmm. content. In other words, we don't, mm-hmm. we don't wake up content as people. Mm-hmm. That is a something we have to intentionally, thoughtfully go, mm-hmm. yeah, I want to be content regardless of what's going on around me. Right. I want this um, let's let's give us a, this inner um, sense of fulfillment mm-hmm. and confidence and peace, regardless of what's going on around me in my environment. Yeah, I think it's it's diving into our very inner core, and again, inviting Christ into that inner core, because I don't think we can do it on our own. I think we can put some skills that help us navigate it, but without Christ, it's an empty empty void. And we need to have him in that space to learn how then to put that into our life. And this is going to relate if you're if you're single or married or um, regardless where you're at in your life. It, it's yeah. going to help you really understand relationship because I'm convinced that you can't have another a healthy relationship with another person mm-hmm. unless you first find true contentment, true peace within your own soul. Yeah. If I'm depending upon, for example, in your case, in our case, yeah. you to make me happy, it, it's it's all it's it's dysfunctional. It, it, it creates a dysfunctional relationship. I would say it's dysfunctional, but it's also fleeting. Yeah. If we look at it even broader outside of a marriage, if you're trying to find um, your happiness in money. Yeah, it's good. Or yeah. in possessions. Or in title. Um, or in title. Yeah. Or in if you're a gal and you really need to shop, you try to find contentment in new clothes or in, 
you know, all these things, which are not all bad in and of themselves. But when that becomes the focus of our contentment, it's fleeting. And it's it's here today, gone tomorrow. And then it's just this perpetual thing. You have to keep going back to that to find that fulfillment. And it it doesn't stay. It just, it, it changes. Yeah. No, and later on, we'll talk about some scripture around that. But I think it's so powerful. You know, Gianna, often when I think about our story, we both come from humble beginnings. Mm-hmm. Um, when we got married, we had very little money. Yep. Very, you were, you were, ra- you were raised in um, Pinehurst, Idaho, or yep. Kingston, Idaho, really. Kingston. Kingston, which is yeah. the name of our grandson. Yep. Um, Kingston, Idaho. So humble beginnings. I came from not much. I mean, just mm-hmm. humble beginnings. And I think about early, like our whole our, our whole wedding, including the honeymoon, costs like I think less than $2,000. Yeah, that's what we could afford. Yeah, and, and paid <laughs> cash. Your parents paid cash for that. Yep. And then we stayed in um, a hotel in Spokane, Washington. and For one night. And that's because <laughs> the, I think the students paid for that. Is they that right? did. It was a gift from the youth ministry. And then stayed at Hartstein Island, which was another gift. We had no money. But what I love about our beginning is we had no money, but we didn't even know it. Yeah. I really love that. And sometimes... You yeah. know, 33 years later, you, we have more. Yeah. But sometimes I think that more gets in the way of um, real joy. Yeah. And not and, uh, that more, that more money. Or we. Uh, I think ha- it can sidetrack us. Yeah. When we, when the, the more you have to manage, it can definitely take our energy outward and it can sidetrack us from really, truly what is the meaning of why we exist. Yeah. And and, why, and that's, again, I think why we have to have Christ in the center of that, because without that, it's void. And you can't feel that with things. You just can't. Yeah, I think that's critical, especially for our listeners that are not Christians, mm-hmm. or you're still searching faith. We would believe, both from a theological and then really practical, that that Jesus is the is the answer to this issue we're talking about here. Yep. That without Christ, that you have to go back to Genesis, we are born in the image of God, we are born to have a relationship with God. And mm-hmm. the moment that relationship with God goes um, goes um, sour or doesn't exist, or yep. you start um, the old-fashioned term in churches, backslide, yep. or you drift from it, that contentment cannot be had without right. absolute um, perfect, you know, going back to the garden, yep. walking in the garden with Christ, walking in the garden with God the Father. Ultimately... That would be our um, biblical and worldview. Some may be listening, you have a different worldview. Um, obviously, we challenge that worldview that without a real authentic relationship with Christ, there probably is no real, real contentment that can mm-hmm. exist. Yep. And so, Jana, when it comes to that, um, l- agree or disagree? Here we go. You need to make a choice to be happy. Do you agree or disagree? You need to make a choice to be happy. Yes, I do agree with that because all of our decisions— impact everything around us. So yeah, I think it's a decision that we wake up every day. Again, I'm not, I like the word happiness, yeah. but it just rubs me a little bit the wrong way. Because I think there's so much more to it than just the word happy. You no, know, Les, and, Les and Leslie Parrott, they talk about in their marriage content, the habit of happiness. Mm-hmm. And it both rubs us wrong. Mm-hmm. Not wrong. Wrong is not, it's a good word. It's a great word. But it's deeper than happiness. It's mm-hmm. contentment. It's fulfillment in Christ. Happiness implies I need certain environment to be happy. I need things to go my way. Mm-hmm. Contentment, Paul says, whatever circumstance I face. I mean, he wrote that from prison. Yeah, yeah. It's so all, have you ever written a letter from prison? Maybe yeah. you have. <laughs> Maybe you've been in prison and you've but, written but letters. A, it is a secret you have to learn. Yes. And so I actually get to make a choice to be happy. I think it feels, yeah. so let me push back. I think it feels a little bit too, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Too positive language. And mm-hmm. I'm a very positive person. Yes, There's you are. nobody, here, let, let me tell my listeners, there's nobody yeah. on this earth that's more positive than yeah. I am. Yeah, I mean, but it feels too positive. It feels too like fakey. I think I think you have to make a choice to live in contentment. Mm-hmm. Would be a would be, and I'm a wordsmith too, yeah. so that's my problem. And you know, I'm a doctor, as you know. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. I'm sitting next to a doctor. And did you hear? I'm also chancellor. Oh, you are chancellor! Congratulations <laughs> yeah. at North at College of Ministry. The big step. You know, big language big, over here. Big. Yeah, big. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, it's I think contentment is the word. So. Happiness is, here's another one. Happiness is based on our circumstances. I think that I would absolutely disagree with that. I think mm-hmm. happiness or contentment needs mm-hmm. to be based upon mm-hmm. what Christ could do within us. I think when when our circumstances change, 
that's the true test of when you really know if you're content and you're going to choose to be happy or you're going to choose that. It's a choice that we all get to make and we're all ha- it's all handed to us and our lives will spin and things will happen in our life that will take us off course. Things that maybe it was a personal decision that we made, a, a really poor one, or it was outside of our context yeah. and we get the phone call that, you know, Someone in our life just passed away or has been diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, wow. Our circumstances will change in a minute in our lives. And I think that, uh, again, it comes back to that real decision. I'm going to choose no matter where, God, you put me, no matter what situation I'm in, I am going to learn to pivot and choose to be content in you. Now, just to have a little fun, oh, because <laughs> because typically here we go. When I, <laughs> when, typically I will do this while I get irritated with yes. somebody give me customer service. Customer to, service is yes, it's I'll, not what it used to be. It's not what it used to be, and I'll just be really honest. Sometimes I'm <laughs> going, oh man, people have to. Yeah. It, it can irritate. Yes, and. I think contentment is huge because we want everyone to serve us so quickly. And mm-hmm. but the other day, you you were at the cleaners and you lost your little. You lost. I did. Yeah, I'm human. I did. <laughs> I was in a rush, and I wanted to get in and out. And I thought, well, I'll just swing by the cleaners really quick, drop off the shirts, <laughs> and be on my way. And uh, there was a new gal. Um, that I hadn't seen. Oh, there. I love this story because this is usually how I behave. So I it's good to hear you tell it. I know it's terrible. <laughs> I walk in, I drop off the shirts, and she starts asking me questions that nobody has ever asked me before. Well, what's this shirt made of? I'm like, I don't know. I usually just drop them off, and then I get a little slip, and I'm on you my had way. like five. I had five, six shirts, yeah. and they were all different, so it wasn't even the same category of shirts. And the lady just keeps repeating the questions. So every shirt she pulls out, so is this one? Uh, I'm like, I don't know. I, you tell me. Do you want this dry clean? Do you want this wash? Do you, do you want star? I'm, I don't know. Just I don't know. And so I found my internal body temperature heating up. <laughs> and I just started with, I don't know, lady. I really don't know. And did so you, did you call I, didn't, her like, I didn't call her lady. In my what, heart, you I called her in lady. your heart, you did. So yes. therefore, it's as if I did it. But anyway, <laughs> as we were in there, I felt I really did feel a check in my spirit. I really did. Truthfully, I'm like, oh, my, you the lady could tell I was starting to get irritated with her because I'm like, I said, I'm really not angry. It's just I've never been asked these questions over and over and I don't have the answer. So my answer will be the same regardless. Um, (laughs) I just don't have the answer to your questions. And so it's just that that checkpoint that when you're pushed and you're rubbed and and to me, time is everything. So don't waste my time. And I promise I won't waste your time ever. Yeah. I'll never waste your and time. For all of our listeners, time <laughs> is critical, Regina. She's never yes. late, always early. Yes. Wants things efficient. So yes. we're just talking about you today. I like it. I don't like it. But <laughs> I like it a are. lot. <laughs> so I, I, where it relates there is I think, Jenna, and again, I do this every day. I, you know, even as we came here ordering coffee, we were always in such a hurry mm-hmm. and we're not understanding their story. Exactly. Who's serving us our coffee. And right. we get so uptight. Because it doesn't serve me. Yeah, well. and, and and I think it's an issue underneath something going on. Yeah. It's an issue of real contentment, not based upon, you know, the coffee being exactly right or the clothes being right and people wasting my time. Right. I think that one of the great ways that as Christians we can impact the world is really showing them how Christians respond, yeah. in this case, when customer service is not done right. Correct. And I do think customer service has been impacted big time by COVID yeah. these last couple of years. And everyone's trying, and lack of workers, by the way. Yeah. And I just think there's so much going on that we as Christians need to really represent Christ and the gospel better yeah. by not, um, I don't know, by not demanding our way all the time. Right. I, mean, I, I go back to the scripture, whatever is patient whatever is kind, um, and we want to just rush through. And we have to, we can't, we can't take away scripture from when we're in the cleaners or we're at the yeah. line in the coffee to get coffee. We ha- it all has to work together, and we have to, we have to practice the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, the fruit of the love, joy, yeah. peace. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, love is kind, patient, all yeah. those things. I guess I just pray for our listeners right now. I pray all, no, yeah. for us that God would birth that mm-hmm. inside of us because 
is especially in today's world, this culture is just it's a disruption we've had. Mm-hmm. It's easy to live in that distraction and not and, and not really understand that we are we are followers of Jesus and we should live differently. And that comes from an inner contentment. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about how to develop that in your life. And this, again, for all relationships, for all circumstances. Um, the first thing I would say is we have to learn the skill, if we can call it the skill, to adjust to things beyond our control mm-hmm. or to accept things beyond our control or to just yeah. understand that things are not in our control. So we have to personally adjust in order to function. So the cleaners right. to adjust. Okay, this is going to take 30 minutes. Yep. And then don't you love that? <laughs> well, it'll take a little longer than I anticipated. But yeah. I think another term to put that into is that sudden jolt. Yeah, yeah. Right? We're, we're, we're moving along in our life at the pace we think we should be going. And then all of a sudden, this jolt comes and it's going to happen at one point or another in our life, probably all in our day. Three or four times a day. I don't yeah. know. Oh, it happens it can every happen day in relationships. It, it's, it's Monday morning right now for us, <laughs> and it's yeah. already happened to me where people yeah. jolt. It's like this sudden, this jolt, like our turbulence is another word yeah. I like. There's a turbulence. And it happens, and you're like, ah, oh, and it's what we do with that. Yeah. It's going to happen. So we kind of need to prepare ourselves that each day something is going to happen that's outside of my control. Yeah. Wow. That is going to happen to me, and it's my choice how I respond to that. So I have to learn to pivot my sail, if you will, if you're a yeah. sailor or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I yeah. have to I have to pivot my um, my position so that I'm not coming across angsty. I'm not hurting people. I'm not saying things that are going to destroy my children, destroy my spouse, yeah. because I have I have that decision in myself that I get to choose that. Yeah. You're preaching now. Oh, I don't know, but that's well, but the it's truth. It's good. It's good. You know, <laughs> the word angsty is interesting because um, I'm trying to think to be transparent. That's one of the things that I, I don't know, you know, try the world we live in. Sometimes I can get angsty. Mm-hmm. And it's not, you know, uh, the good news, I don't like get violent. <laughs> no. <laughs> or look at you're being my counselor right now. Okay. Well, yeah, can- the, no, the good news, <laughs> but I can get angsty. And I think that angsty is a, it can be a, in my own personal life, a lack of just, yeah. it really is control. It is. It, you know, that word control right there, it really yeah. is I want control. I don't consider myself a, a control freak, mm-hmm. but maybe. Maybe there's a little in there. <laughs> can we say there's a little control in all of us? Sure. Yeah, I would I, I would say so. that. I, I, I would think you're not being honest if you don't say that. Yeah. There's a little control, and I don't know if that's all bad. I, I, but let's be honest. You got me honest. thinking theology of control. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's part of living. We all have some kind of control at because some point. Because we want point. order. Or, there's a difference mm-hmm. between order and control there. That mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I know the total nuances right now as it's just coming up. Because mm-hmm. I think order is good. God is a God of order. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we have to understand there are things. I think the big thing here is that there are things beyond my control. That's it. That no matter what I do, yep. the world, it's like, um, that's the old thing. Lord, give me the patience to accept things I cannot change. Yeah. Now we sound like a class, right? <laughs> <laughs> But it's really, truly, Lord, there's things I cannot control. Mm-hmm. And a part of that is where the opposite is putting our trust in God then and right. learning how to adjust. Like I like this cell, I think that you're to adjust your cells to the yeah. winds that's going on around you. And when you learn that skill of pivoting and you learn that skill of adjusting when situations are outside of your control, it really allows you not to be angsty. Because you know it's going to happen, and you've prepared yourself for the day that I'm going to wake up today, something's going to happen, and not that I'm like anticipating bad things to happen, but yeah. it's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen today, it might happen tomorrow, and we don't always know when it is. But man, if we can learn that skill of just adjusting ourselves, that's good. You know, when you're on a vacation and your plane gets delayed, well, that's that's a that's a pivot. Yeah. You get to decide in that moment, are you going to yell at the flight people or are you going to just pivot and say, well, okay, this is yeah. outside of my control. Yeah. So make, so the skill is adjusting. Mm-hmm. I think there are also that ability to trust that God's writing the story. You know, that scripture yeah. in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. Lean out upon your own understanding. Acknowledge him in everything. So I think we have to become better yeah. at just not trying to control everything to my little needs. Really, yes. the world doesn't. Focus, the world doesn't revolve around me. <laughs> yes, that's a yeah. great statement to say every morning. <laughs> the world the world does not revolve around me. It's like Rick Warren's <laughs> book, The Purpose Driven Church, or Purpose Driven Life. Life. 
He yeah. the, the world is not the the. It's not about me. Not I think that's the me. opening of yeah. his most one of the most famous books ever written. It's not about me, yeah. and I think he just got it because we wanted it to be about me and us, yeah. and to really get that control issue under the the lordship of Jesus. So the second thing is remove poison or toxin in your life. Remove poison in your life. What does that look like? Yeah, well, what is poison? First, what? give me an example. <laughs> I think poison— we, have, we, have, we actually three or four here, but what's, what's some poison? poison can be bitterness, yeah. unforgiveness, um, blame. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think, first of all, all of it. It's um, self-pity. It's blame. We're reading right off our notes, too, by the way, here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're cheating a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's okay. <laughs> no, but one of the things, I think one of the greatest poison, I think there's so many. First of all, if you have bitterness, that is, that's poison that's going to kill the other person by you not forgiving. Mm-hmm. And I, no, not the other person is going to kill you. I said that wrong. It, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pill that you take that you think is going to hurt them, but it kills you. Yeah. And for me, because of, again, our upbringing and um, not knowing my real dad and coming from a dysfunctional family, forgiveness has been um, the signature of my life. Mm-hmm. Not to allow bitterness to get in, because I think if that bitterness mm-hmm. gets in your soul, mm-hmm. it will destroy. Listen yeah. to me, if you have bitterness, will destroy every relationship, every interaction, everything you do, that will come out at that moment. Yep. I, I also think um, self-pity. Yeah. Um, feeling sorry for yourself. This happened to me. We all have stories that we could look back on and, oh, this happened to me. This And it's part of our makeup and it's beautiful. But again, it's what you do with it. You can go the rest of your life and have self-pity that, oh, this this is, you know, that doesn't define me. It's part of my story. Yeah, it's good. But it surely doesn't define how I'm going to live the next portion of my life. I'm going to figure out how not to, how, it's, it's, yeah, bad things happen. Yeah. Have we been hurt? Yeah. Have and we been, you know, chopped off here and there? And yeah, it's been rough, but it's our choice. I'm not going to live in that for the rest of my life. I will choose to get back up and I'll choose to keep walking. And what's interesting, all of us need people in our lives. How do I say this? Relationship in our life that, yeah, when I want to be self pity, they'll listen for a second. Yes, and I'll let you stay there. No, they won't let me stay there. And mm-hmm. I think sometimes we have friends and maybe even our spouse or relationships that actually cultivate us to stay in our self-pity by, oh, poor you, poor There yeah. needs to be a sense of listening, a sense of real good godly counsel. Yeah. But we all need some friends in our life that call us up. Yes. To say, hey, okay, that happened. Mm-hmm. Don't live in that. Don't let mm-hmm. that define who you are. All of us need people uh, you know, the old saying that we used to use all the time as youth pastors, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. I think it's true. Show me your friends. Show me the people that are speaking in your life. Some yeah. of you just have friends that are letting you have, they're adding to the poison. Well, yeah, you attract the people that you become like. I mean, you just do. And so when you have people in your life who are gossiping or you have people in your life who are tearing down one another and you surround yourself with that, you'll become that. Yeah. You don't want to, but when you put yourself in that all the time and there's negative talk, yeah, it just you're it, gonna become like you'll that. You'll never develop contentment. You'll never mm-hmm. develop a trust in Christ. Now, the big poison I think is comparison. Like if mm-hmm. I thought one word opposite, if I, if I asked the question, what's opposite of contentment? Mm-hmm. It would be comparison. I mm-hmm. think comparison kills contentment, mm-hmm. especially in in the day of social media. Mm-hmm. So everyone's posting their best. They're sure. posting their best date, their best day, their mm-hmm. best moments. And we all go, oh, if I could have their life or their marriage or their kids or yeah. their whatever it would be. And it's killing us because we're never in the moment. We're always comparing ourselves to yeah. someone's best and their best is not reality. Right. And I think comparison, Jana, I think it kills our careers. I think it, it kills families. It kills families. Mm-hmm. It kills us being present because I'm going, if I can have theirs— and. And theirs is not even reality. You're comparing it. It's like, it's like this online pornography, if you will, but yeah. not porn. You I mean, never, online just comparison. Well, you can never reach that. That's not what God has called you to do. So for to, for to me, I have to look in front of me and say, am I doing all the right things to keep myself healthy? Yeah. Am I inputting the right things in myself to make sure I'm thinking correctly, it's that good. I've got good um, balance in my life, that I'm I'm having some moments where I'm 
have solitude yeah. where I'm away from the craziness. I'm yeah, like, okay, let me think this straight. But I think when we try to compare ourselves to somebody else, their marriage, the way they parent, the way that they dress, the way how much money they have, or it, it's just you a, know, all that's fleeting. And it will kill contentment in your life. Yeah. It will kill it because you're comparing yourself to something that's not reality anyways. Mm -hmm. And we all deal with this. And can I say something? If you're listening today and you are in that curse of comparison of of somebody else, I would just encourage you to get alone, journal, ask yourself some real good questions, some good like why, what is causing me to not be content? Um, What is going on in my life? And do some of your own work. Don't try to be how someone else lives their life. God has designed you to be uniquely you for a purpose. He's designed you for that. And so when you're trying to put on someone else's armor, you're never going to walk right because it doesn't, it's like a shoe that doesn't fit right. And you're never going to become who you're supposed to be if you're always looking out there um, somewhere else. It's, there's a purpose for your life. So do the work, do the homework to really discover why is it that I was born. Yeah, very good. And then lastly, so adjust to things beyond your control, remove um, poison in your life. And number three is simplify your life. I think all of us need to work at simplifying our schedules, simplifying our commitments, simplifying our calendar. Yeah. I th- like we've talked about in other podcasts, we've got so busy, yeah. so hurried. We need to learn to say no, say yes. I yeah. think just simplifying is critical. I think that... Um, you know, there's there's 24 hours in a day. And what we're trying to do in America is we're trying to cram all these things. And there's there's only, I mean, God set parameters for a reason. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, He set those 24 hours. He rested hours. on the seventh he day. He rested. There and was then, a boundary there, yeah. Yes, and so he put those in our life for a reason. And when we keep saying yes to things and when we make commitments to that person that we can't meet, it, it just, it, really distorts our frame of mind. And so we need to be super careful. The only thing we can do within those 24 hours when we have these circles of like our Christian life, you know, our work life and our family life, God, family, work, okay? There's only so much we can do in a day. And that's why we have those parameters. So what do we do? We have to go internal and go up. Yeah. Because that's where our strength comes from, is from God and God alone. And so when we're trying to fill it with all these things, it becomes distorted, and then we hear nothing. Yeah, we're filling it with things instead of the presence of God, instead of those moments where Mm -hmm. we can be real with ourselves and journal. Mm -hmm. And I think that itself just eats that contentment. Mm -hmm. So um, there are are a couple statements that I just want to give them to you. They're, They're all statements in the Bible. But I think they're interesting on this issue of contentment to reflect on. The one, one statement is, godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm-hmm. Isn't that a beautiful statement? I love Paul that. Paul made it in Timothy. Godliness with contentment yeah. is great gain. That He's implying there godliness without contentment is not good. Yeah, that can take you into some weird places. <laughs> and so thinking about it, it's often when we think of godliness, we don't put that word contentment right by it, Yeah. Paul here would go, no, You, if you really want great gain in your life, we have to be godly people, which we believe only can come through the power of the Spirit, the gospel. Mm-hmm. Beautiful statement. Here's another one. Mm-hmm. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. That's good. Is that, a, again, good. I'm quoting Bible, it's in First Timothy, yeah. we, we brought nothing into the world, Yep. we can take nothing out of it. I think reminds us, everything we have, we're going to give away one day. Yeah, or your kids will give it to well, the goodwill. <laughs> well, when we they, die, come they on, let's better be not honest. Give. They'll clean out our house and they'll say, "Oh, let's just throw that away." I hope there's. Oh, a, they're going to. Yeah, trust me on that. They'll probably take that big teddy bear that I have for Kaylee <laughs> and throw it away. Maybe. Well, I think to remind ourselves, we brought nothing in the world. Mm-hmm. We can take nothing out of it. The only thing we can do is leave something to the world, and that's, that's it. not. It, it can be inheritance. We leave an inheritance, mm-hmm. but we leave legacy. We leave relationship. All the stuff that we try to collect, we're yeah. not going to, you never, what's the old saying? Let me see if I can bring it up. Uh, you've never seen a, 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 a U-Haul behind a hearse. There it is. A U-Haul <laughs> behind a hearse. Yeah. There, I mean, it's a powerful reminder of contentment. Yeah. That all the stuff, even how much money we have, we're not taking it with us. Yeah. Hopefully we leave it for for kingdom reasons and make a difference, inheritance, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. But it's a, such a powerful. And then this final statement, I just, again, these are statements in the Bible, which 
Um, we believe in biblical authority. We believe in the ancient text. We believe in scripture. Um, that, but this is some of the reasons I believe in it because it's so powerful, right? Here it mm-hmm. is. For if we, Paul says, for if we have food and clothing, we will, we will be content with that. Hmm. I would have food, clothing, and shelter. Yep, because that's I, fair. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have to say, Paul, but Paul said, if I just could eat, get dressed, mm-hmm. I'll be content with that. Mm-hmm. I guess profound wisdom from the ancient text here. Yep. And I pray for our listeners. I pray for every one, one of us. And, and we start here with the Jones Party too, that yeah. all of us would find contentment in Christ Mm-hmm. Then the world that's saying more is better, uh, we would say Christ is better. Yeah. We would say he's our confidence. And if you have things, by the way, this is not anti-things. Right. If you have things, see as a blessing from the Lord. But one of the phrases I use I, as I get more and things, I want to be, I want to raise my standard of giving, not my standard of living. Let's yeah. be a blessing with the things that we have. <laughs>